American college and university youth, as I said, were very um, key to the future of this existence of this museum and the mission that we all share in, in studying and teaching about the Holocaust. Um, so as part of that, we have a pretty uh, significant internship program. Um, and um, we were really excited that Emily from Keene State, a graduate of Keene State, uh, came and first she joined us as an intern um, and she was impressed us all. So after she graduated from your program, uh, we decided that she could really contribute to our research activities. She's got a lot of terrific skills um, and join us as a contractor. So now she's actually um, employed by the museum and when she's in the Mandel Center for Advanced Holocaust Studies working on special projects um, in our University Programs Division. So we get, she gets to go back to today, for instance, she's taking the Keene State um, students through the exhibit. So now she's reaching back out to her, what, you know, where she was coming from as a student yes. and talking to them, to them about the exhibit and the programs here. Um, so in between these visits with college and university students where she has that direct connection, she can appreciate their experience, um, she's been um, working in the center on our seminar program. So we have faculty coming in from all over the U.S who get together to talk about how they construct a syllabus, how they teach the Holocaust and have um, in environments where maybe the subject matter, um, where it's contentious, you know, where there's certain, there's certain resistance, where there's anti-Semitism, where there's homophobia, where there's xenophobia. Um, and so we, we bring faculty together um, to, to share, you know, how it is that they teach the Holocaust in all these different environments in the U.S. Um, and Emily gets to sit in on some of those sessions. And I noticed too when she sits in on our fellowship meetings, so our fellows from around the world who are working in the archives get together every week, they have brown bag lunches, and they talk about what they're finding in the archives, and they show, you know, we put artifacts in the table, we put documents in the table, and we're kind of gathered around, and we're saying, you know, what do you think of this, and why is this marked like this, and what's the caption on that photo, and um, so we're, you know, trying to solve these puzzles as a group, as a research group. And she participates in that, and she's not shy, and she and she contributes. You know, she doesn't stand back. She gets right into it, and she and she points out things. The other day, we were in a meeting, um, uh, and it had to do with. Um, well, she sits in at most of the meetings. Um, oh yeah, it was a meeting that had to do with photography, and uh, visual imagery, and there were some photos of the um, Wuj Ghetto, Litzmannstadt, uh, of what was the Roma section of the ghetto, which was really. Jewish survivor accounts um, and diaries of the time uh, uh, conveyed that this was kind of the worst section of the ghetto and that people basically you know, tried to avoid that section, not only because of epidemics but because the, the Roma were, uh, had the most uh, difficult circumstances, the living conditions were horrendous. And so this presentation was showing these photographs and making this argument about the um, absence of presence, that this, this part of the ghetto, the Roma were there but somehow you know, even the Jewish victims in the ghetto wanted to keep their distance. So that within the ghetto atmosphere, there were certain hierarchies and certain differences of experience. And um, so uh, Emily, um, you know, she raised her hand. She challenged the scholar in this case and said, what do you mean by absence of presence? You know, um, what, you know think again. I, you know, there's an individual figured in that photograph. Do you really mean absence of presence? And <laughs> so it was, it was good to see her challenge someone who was a rather senior scholar, by the way. Um, so I like the fact that Emily had that confidence um, and she raised a very important question that maybe some people were a little bit, you know, reluctant, a little bit hesitant to raise. So.